artisan chips and crackers. And I'm just back from Florida where my adorable grandson asked for Alice crackers the entire trip at just about every meal because he loves the crunch. And it's a great way to get good nutrition and healthy food for your children if you make these. Today I'm going to teach you how to make crackers from your favorite ingredients to be a cracker iron chef. This is from chapter 10 of my book, which will go into this in much greater detail. Let's see what we've got in the pantry. About every half year, I grind all kinds of grains and legumes and beans in my flour grinder or the softer ones in my coffee mill. Let me show you some of the flours that I have on hand and make crackers with. Any one or more of them will make a great cracker. I've got brown rice, garbanzo beans, red lentil, French lentil, corn, masa harina, whole wheat flour, and a really large almond flour mix that I got at Costco. So here's the basic recipe for making crackers from your favorite ingredients. For how to make the whole grain and super seed mixes, go to my website wholegrainalice.com. At the top of the site's homepage, look under Recipes, where you will find links to the whole grain and super seed mixes. Now let me show you how to make your own custom crackers. Today I'm going to make a cracker I've never made before, a hazelnut wild rice cracker, which may end up being what I serve at Thanksgiving. First, I have my quarter cup measure. I'm going to take a quarter cup of the hazelnut flour, a quarter cup of the wild rice flour, and of course a quarter cup of the whole grain mix, then a heaping teaspoon of dried onion, uh, slightly less than that of Italian seasoning, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a couple tablespoons of the super seed mix. I'm going to use an egg which gives it a very nice texture. Mix that in well. And then add enough water so that it will pour out easily onto the mat. And I don't want to over water it, so I'm going to just keep adding it little by little till I get the consistency I'm looking for. This is about the right consistency. You can see it's very watery. It's going to pour out, and I'm going to stir it until the very last second, because if I just let it sit there for a while and wait to pour it, it's, the water's going to separate out. Now I'm going to pour this on to a silicon mat sitting inside of a baking sheet. And then tilt the pan around to try to spread it evenly. And I can use the spatula to get it to the corners where it doesn't want to flow without running off. So now it's time to put the crackers in the oven, which has been preheated to 300 degrees, and bake them for 10 minutes, and then it'll be time to take them out to cut them. Ten minutes are up. Now it's time to cut the crackers. While the 
crackers are baking for another 20 minutes, I thought I'd show you the tool I use to cut them, a fluted pastry cutter. If you don't have a fluted pastry cutter, you can also use a spatula instead. I want to talk about baking time because it can vary. It depends on what flour you're using. For instance, corn flour is faster than other flours. Uh, how much water you put in is going to make a difference. What kind of oven you have. I have a small one. I have convection. I know that my temperatures are exact because I have an oven thermometer that I've calibrated it with. All of these factors are going to uh, change how much time and really in the end it's easy to solve. If it's not ready, you just put it back in and bake them a little longer. Okay, let's see if they're done. I had baked them for half an hour at 300, then I turned the oven off and let them bake another half hour at 300 and I've just taken them out. The outer crackers are usually done. Uh, yeah, that snapped really nicely. Now the inner crackers, uh-oh, that's bending. That's, that means these inside crackers aren't done. I'm going to reset the oven to 250 degrees, and as soon as it reaches that temperature, turn the oven off and let them bake for half an hour more. Okay, back out of the oven. Let's check one more time. Oh yeah. That's ready. And a sure way to know is to eat one. Now I'm ready for a great evening. The dinner guests arrive shortly.